here with Jack Besad, who's the Chief Risk Officer from the Texas. Uh, Jack, you were part of a very interesting panel yesterday describing um, some of the aspects of the role of Chief Risk Officer. Um, you know, with all the regulatory changes, what are some of the, the key challenges that you and your colleagues are facing? I think the role is, is different whether you're in a, an asset management environment or whether you're in a bank or whether you're in an insurance company. And as you are, as Natix is a group that uh, encompasses all three activities, it's a little bit more complex. And one of the challenges is to cope with these various regulations, business by business, country by country, and make sure you're not just overwhelmed by the regulatory constraints and can focus a little bit on your business as well. But it must be tricky because sometimes the regulations um, uh, may differ from one another and you have to pick which one to, to apply or interpret which one to apply. Uh, is there a, a process around that or um, how do you guys deal with some of the, the ambiguity? I think the safe thing to do is to uh, always align to the most prudent uh, regulation. Uh, I think it's also uh, uh, quite advisable to speak to the regulators, to get guidance from them when you have a conflict of uh, regulation. And I think more generally, we have to make sure that we do not just run the business because of regulation. Regulation should be a constraint, regulation should be a set of rules that we have to abide by, but it is not the strategy of the bank. The strategy is something we have to decide, taking into account regulation and evolving regulation. That makes it, with, with all the evolution, it seems like many um, firms, banks, insurers, asset managers, have applied different internal organizational approaches. Uh, risk is certainly a key player, uh, legal, compliance, uh, finance teams, and the business. Uh, how do you work with those key partners? I think uh, there are two elements. The first one is that the various uh, control functions, risk, compliance, legal, you mentioned finance as well, have to work closer and closer together. Many of their concerns are joint concerns and the uh, risk prudential regulation has some links uh, or can have some links or some contradictions with, for instance, accounting regulation. So we have to work closer and closer together and get the proper governance so that we sit together, compare notes uh, and solve the issues together. That's within the control functions. Another element uh, as regards business is that we have to make sure that uh, issues of risk are not just the uh, responsibility of the risk managers, but the responsibility of everybody. And I would compare to the risk manager to a goalkeeper uh, in a soccer team. He's in charge ultimately of making sure that no goals are being scored against the team, but if he's the only one to take care of that, and the other 10 players around the field let all the balls go through, mm -hmm. the team is not going to win. So everybody has to be conscious about risk. That's what we call risk culture, in, in, in fact. Uh, and it is not only the responsibility of the risk managers. Th that's a great analogy. So if uh, the other 10 or so players are running to score the other way and, and generate revenue, and you're left to guard on your own, that wouldn't work quite as well. Uh, so it seems like the business because they're out there in the front line, because often they have funding um, and expertise, have to be key players. How do you um, how do you kind of balance that? Because there's a certain specialized knowledge around liquidity, around capital, and perhaps some of the regulations. And you know, how do you you kind of manage that central expertise versus disseminating it out more broadly? Yeah, we we are trying first to organize training so that on these new fields, uh, new elements of regulation, new elements of risk that we are a little bit uh, forgotten or off the radar screen in the past, we share the information with a wide audience within the bank. And secondly, we try to exchange people between front office and risk teams so that some of the front office expertise comes into risk and some of the risk expertise goes into front office as well. Well, that, that makes a lot of sense. So you, you really try to have a, a well, you describe the culture. Um, in, in terms of, I'll say, people starting out or earlier in their careers, what are some of the skills they should be thinking about you know, to be able to succeed in this, in this crazy environment? Well, I think it's difficult because the environment is changing. So yeah. y you have to uh, find people who are agile, who are adaptable, uh, who are curious. And I think these are really the main uh, uh, qualities that we are looking for. Of course, people have to be uh, able to uh, speak English, understand math, whatever, have some financial analysis skills. Uh, but these are the technical skills. And more important than that, I believe, is to have 
an open eye to the rest of the world so that you're able to evolve as the world around you is evolved. So it seems like a lot of it's attitude and, and perspective that things will evolve over time. Um, yeah, the, the other part is uh, yeah, the, the role of the risk manager, it, it, traditionally there was much credit risk and then of course market risk and then operational. It seems that it's much broader now than ever before. Yes, and it's intertwined. And, and, and the issues arise in areas which are very often at the crossroads of market risk, credit risk, operational risk, liquidity risk. The subprime issue, uh, uh, everybody thought this was a market risk issue. And then it turned out liquidity dried up. So it was a liquidity risk issue. And there was no price. So we, we, we looked at the underlying assets. This was a credit risk issue. That's right. It was really in the middle. And, and the fact that you look at it only from one angle can lead you to the wrong decision. That's a great point because the, the, uh, a reasonable assumption was it was because of derivatives or securitization, but at the heart it was also because of, um, I'll say, less than appropriate underwriting criteria. Absolutely. Securitization was a, a factor that played a role in the dissemination of the problem, maybe in the uh, growth of the problem, but the underlying root was wrong uh, underwriting of, of loans. Yeah, that's right. Uh, now, as, as an internationally active bank, uh, it must be challenging to keep up with everything. I mean, there's so much Dodd-Frank, thousands and tens of thousands of pages, plus um, you know, European regulations, Basel Committee. Um, you know, we're not sure where liquidity may wind up with you know, the new aspects. Plus, there's some U.S. versus uh, European differences in treating you know, certain counterparties for central clearing, say corporates. Um, you know, do you have a scorecard? And how do you keep up with all that? We, we, we have scorecards and we try to uh, keep abreast of what's going on. Uh, it's changing all the time. It's certainly making uh, our life a little bit more difficult. And our role is to simplify the issues, uh, to retain the ones that are most significant to the bank so that there can be a strategic decision as to what we do and not just reacting to the uh, regulation, but making our own choices based on what regulation is going to be. Um, yeah, I really appreciate you sharing this with us, and thank you, thank you for your time. My pleasure.